Today we are continuing our NHL playoff preview and prediction series. Today we're taking a look at the Habs versus the Leafs, and that's coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, today we're previewing the Habs and Leafs playoff series. Of course, these two iconic franchises have not met in the playoffs in over 40 years, and it sure should be a really solid, fun, entertaining series, let's hope. Uh, and I do really hope that we can get this series to go six or seven games uh, just from the entertainment aspect that we could possibly get from it. Uh, although I know many people are predicting the Leafs will win in a short order, but I'll give you my thoughts on that momentarily here now of course uh, in case you're not following along yet with this series essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some stats from the regular season to compare these two teams we're going to look at the season series compare the goaltending situation as well as their top scores and then i'll follow that up after analyzing it to give you my predictions on who i think is going to win so i hope you follow along uh, give me your uh, predictions down below in the comments as well and who you feel is going to win as well and then we can look back on this later to see how we did so let's get started here uh, by first up looking at some regular season stats between the Montreal Canadiens and the first place Toronto Maple Leafs. So comparing regular season records here, the Leafs finished with a record of 35, 13, and 7 for 77 points. Now as I record this, they actually have one game left, which will be played uh, later on tonight against the Winnipeg Jets. It's not going to impact the standings at all, but they will likely end up with, uh, you know, possibly another point or two on the board. And of course, the record only shows 55 games. So in case you're wondering why, that's why here. Obviously, the playoffs are getting started. Uh, so we want to get these previews out, and there's still a few games left to finish up. Uh, of course, the Montreal Canadiens finished with a record of 24, 21, and 11 for 59 points. Did not really fare all that well down the stretch. Ran into some injury problems, especially the big one being Brendan Gallagher, in my opinion. Um, and they just didn't really have a strong finish to the season. They saw a coaching change partway through, uh, and they didn't really improve under new coach Dominic Ducharme. So we'll have to see how things go. Just for comparison here, uh, the Ottawa Senators, who are going to miss the playoffs, uh, finish at least sixth. They, I mean, they could drop to seventh. It really depends on how the Canucks finish up. But they're only one win less than the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, so in the standings, like the Habs are in the playoffs, but they're really at least statistically speaking, closer to the teams that have missed the playoffs, uh, more in line with what we saw from, uh, you know, Ottawa, Calgary, Vancouver. It really felt like there was a, the big three in this division, and even Winnipeg struggled on the stretch here as well. So let's jump back into the team stats here. Let's take a look at some goals for and against and some special teams numbers. Uh, the Maple Leafs, obviously a high-scoring team so far, have scored 186 goals for sixth best in the league, while the Habs scored 159 for 17th best. So clearly the, uh, the Leafs have an advantage being a more offensive team. I don't think that'll surprise anybody. Uh, defensively speaking, from a goals against perspective, the Leafs actually did much better this year, uh, being the sixth best team at 144. That's certainly a great improvement. Uh, certainly one of the big areas that we've seen things get cleaned up here uh, on this team. Now, the Habs, on the other hand, allowed 165 for 20th best. So certainly a, a drastic difference there. Uh, on the power play, let's take a look at those. The numbers are actually pretty close. The Leafs finished with a 20.3% efficiency rate for 16th best. Like I said, they do have one game left, so that could get better. Earlier in the year, they were clicking at a much higher rate and were higher up in the rankings. But the last number of games here, they, their power play has really, really struggled, which has dropped them down substantially here. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, the, the Maple Leafs power play traditionally, uh, as of late in the last couple of years, has been much better. So if they can get that back on track for the playoffs that could be a huge problem for Montreal but if they can't it could be a huge problem for Toronto now the Habs power play 19.2 percent for 18th best so overall they're not a great deal of difference but certainly when you look at who they can put out there on each side of the equation you have to think theoretically here that the Leafs have an advantage and they just had a bit of a struggle lately where the Habs are kind of chugging along here a little bit more consistently around that level on the PK uh, neither one of them were overly bad or overly great but certainly an area that if either team can improve upon could make a difference in this series the Leafs finished with 78.3 percent for 23rd best whereas the Habs were at 78.5 for 22nd. So not a great deal of difference that way. Uh, they're both more so built uh, to try to score goals, but the Leafs, like I said, have a little bit more higher end skill, which results in more goals going in the net on their side. Now, when it comes to the face-off percentages, um, again, the Habs, 48.4 for 24th best. Their young centers certainly have struggled in the face-offs dot, uh, certainly an area they could get better at. 
Obviously, a guy like Philip Deneau tr traditionally was one of their better face-off guys. Uh, they're going to need him. Hopefully, he can play. I know he's been battling concussion and is expected to return. On the Leafs side of things, 51.1% for 10th best, and they certainly have a few of the better uh, face-off guys around the league. Even guys like, like Spezza, for example, may not log a ton of ice time, but still really good on draws and sometimes uh, is out there especially to take a face-off. And guys like Tavares, Matthews, etc. are still pretty decent at it as well. So overall, statistically speaking here, uh, you would think that Toronto has more of an edge. They're certainly the better offensive and defensive team according to their regular season statistics. Uh, season series went in favor of the Leafs with a 7-3 edge. Uh, so obviously that's a fairly big advantage. The Maple Leafs have shown this year that they can handle Montreal on most occasions. But, of course, the playoffs can be a very different beast. And I know in some of those recent games, especially down the stretch here, the Habs were really beaten up by injury. Uh, I do think it's fair to say that the Montreal Canadiens probably went through more adversity this year than Toronto when it comes to that stuff. They did have a, a short shutdown, the COVID-related one. And then injury-wise, like I said, lately down the stretch here, they've been without Gallagher for a while. Uh, Weber was hurt. Price missed a fair bit of time. Philip Deneau battled concussion. Um, you know, and some other ones as well so really they certainly were banged up more i mean the leafs have been without freddie anderson a lot but at the same time campbell stepped in nicely uh, and otherwise they haven't been too bad i mean zach hyman certainly was hurt uh later into the season as well uh that was a you know a fairly substantial injury to the maple leafs uh, because of a bad uh, knee on knee collision there with alex edler but you know overall i think the hams have uh, dealt with more in that regard so we'll see if they can both be healthy going into this series what might change on the outcomes now, before we jump into the rest of the stats and give you my predictions, I just want to take a quick break here and acknowledge our channel sponsor. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. Of course, with Manscaped, we have a special offer here for all Top Shelf Hockey viewers where you can get 20% off in free shipping and all orders at Manscaped.com. Now, of course, Manscaped just launched a brand new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is a fantastic product. They've taken the level up here even again with the skin safe replaceable blades, uh, they have it's waterproof, it's wireless charging, uh, has a travel lock on it, uh, as well as a nice light so you don't miss what you're doing. So certainly a terrific product. Now many people associate Manscaped with their trimmers, which is certainly uh, kind of their top product, but they do have a lot of other great options as well, uh, including what they call the Weed Whacker, which is another trimmer for your ears and nose, and they have a variety of deodorants and sprays as well, which also keep you fresh and are terrific as well. So certainly Manscaped has a lot to offer and we certainly highly recommend all of their products. So check out manscaped.com and use promo code TSH for 20% off and free shipping. So thanks for watching our sponsorship there. Obviously, Manscaped's been a big part of the channel for the last couple months, and I certainly appreciate all of you taking the time to either check them out or consider making a purchase. It really helps us out a long ways here. Now, obviously, let's jump now into the goaltending stats. Let's compare the Leafs and Hams and the goaltending department to see who might have an edge. Now, looking at the Maple Leafs, I would widely suspect that Jack Campbell is a starting goalie in game number one. Uh, Campbell finished with a record of 17-2-2. Two two. Uh, really solid goals against with 2.11 and a 9.23 save percentage. So really solid numbers there from a guy who's traditionally been a backup, but was basically forced into being a starter after Anderson went down. Uh, he also pitched two shutouts as well. Uh, Freddie Anderson did return for one game against the Senators uh, the other night. Uh, did lose the game in overtime, allowed four goals. I wouldn't say he was terrible, but I wouldn't say he was good or great either. He was, to me, he was just okay. Um, and some of the goals that went in, uh, to me, he looked like he kind of lost the puck and just... I don't know. There, a couple of them he definitely should have had. So hard to say where his game is at. His conditioning stint in the AHL before making that NHL return was certainly not great either. Um, so I wonder how Sheldon Keefe and the Leafs are going to handle this situation. Like I said, I suspect Campbell will start. But if anything happens and they need another goalie in there, will it be Anderson or will it turn to David Riddick? I'm not really sure. I would suspect Anderson, but... Uh, you know, how much do they trust and rely on him right now? It's really hard to say. On the Montreal side of things, we saw a fairly even split in games, mainly due to Price's injury and Jake Allen's strong play. Uh, certainly, uh, let's look at the numbers, though. Uh, Price finished with a 12-7-5 record, a 2-6-4 and a 9-0-1 save percentage with one shutout. Not fantastic numbers, but not horrific either. Uh, Jake Allen's numbers... 
Can be deceiving, in my opinion. He had a record of 11, 12, and 5. But you know what? The Habs, for some reason, scored a lot less goals when he was in the net compared to Carey Price, which is kind of odd, but that's the way it went. He didn't get the goal support, so that's why more of the uh, wins uh, are not there, more so in the loss and overtime loss column. He had a 2.68 goals against and a 907 save percentage, and both of those stats were better as well, except down the stretch, the Habs overall as a team did not play well. The team in front of him wasn't really as good, and his numbers did take a bump downwards uh, in the last probably five to ten games of the year. Uh, otherwise, he because he was outperforming Carey Price's stats by a pretty good margin for a pretty big chunk of the season, especially earlier on when the Habs were finishing up uh, you know higher in the standings here before they had a bit of a letdown after all the injuries kicked in. But overall, it's really hard to say. I'd have to say advantage leaps because Jack Campbell, out of these four goaltenders, has been the most consistent all year. I would suspect that the Habs turn to Price, uh, but I mean, they have capable goalie now if they need to go to a backup if either team has uh, an advantage when it comes to depth i would say it's montreal uh, given how allen has played as a really solid backup uh, it was actually awarded uh, by the team as being uh, a top player for them this year and in the leafs case if campbell got hurt i'd be really concerned so we'll see but i'd say overall advantage leaves but at the same time carry price is a capable goalie of stealing a series if he can be the carry price that we've seen in the past and it could be a situation but he has to be that in order for the habs to stand a real chance to win here now lastly let's take a look and compare their top scores i mean obviously the leafs as we know and discussed are much more offensive teams so the numbers are going to indicate that here uh you have mitch marner leading the way with 67 points and matthew's only one behind at 66 of course matthews has 41 goals in the season uh will win the rocket richard trophy uh john Tavares has 50 points, Nylander at 42, Morgan Riley at 34, and Zach Hyman at 33. So lots of solid numbers there. On the Habs side, you get Tyler Toffoli, free agent signing that worked out really well for them, leading the way at 44. Uh, defenseman Jeff Petrie, who had an offensive breakthrough this year, uh, 42 points. Nick Suzuki at 41, another solid year for him. Thomas Tatar at 30, Josh Anderson at 24, as well as Philip Deneau at 24. Um, so certainly the Habs have their uphill battle to, to go against this team here. Clearly, they have guys that can score. Uh, and I know sometimes when the Habs and Leafs get together, things can be a little bit unpredictable. But overall, through the consistent part of the regular season here, the Maple Leafs certainly have them outnumbered by a large margin when it comes to the ability to put the puck in the net. And I said they also have an advantage here when it comes to their defensive numbers. So certainly in this series, I am predicting that the Maple Leafs will win. Uh, I'm going to say that the Habs push it to game six. I know some are thinking a four-game sweep or maybe a five. Uh, I think the Habs will put up a good fight just because this battle uh, is something that seems to always be unpredictable at times. And even though the Leafs have owned the season series, we haven't seen a playoff series with these two teams, like I said, my entire lifetime. It's been over 40 years. Um, so I hope just from an entertainment standpoint that they can make it go a little bit longer. But certainly uh, the, for the Habs to win, in my opinion, they need Carey Price to be healthy. They need Carey Price to be the old Carey Price when he was winning all that hardware a few years back. Uh, if he can, he can steal a game and can steal a series, but... If he doesn't have that in him, they're going to be really hard up against it here. Now, they also need Brendan Gallagher back because he's the heartbeat and the pulse of this team. Uh, you know, he's a guy that can get under the other team's skin, maybe get them off their, uh, you know, off their game a little bit. On Toronto side of things, well, you know what? The main thing they need to do is they need to get that power play going. They need to keep the offensive numbers rolling, uh, and they certainly need to keep the strong defensive play going. Really, the Leafs don't need to change a whole lot. They've handled this team well all year. Statistically speaking, it should be a fairly easy series for them. Should be, but playoff series never are easy, usually. So I would suspect here that, like I said, the Habs will put up a good fight. And if they run into a hot goalie, if Toronto, for example, gets Carey Price playing on his absolute A game, they can't get the power play going, that could be trouble, you know, so things have to go just right and they need some really major key things to happen for Montreal to stand a chance to win, which I'm not right now convinced and prepared to say can happen, but at the end of the day here, I think the Leafs will pull this one out and move on to the next round to play the winner of the Oilers and Jets. So certainly let me know what your thoughts and predictions are on the series. It's going to be fun. Uh, like I said, two top six Two original six teams battling for the first time in a long time will be very fun to watch. So let me give me your predictions in the comments and we can discuss further. Stay tuned for the next prediction series coming up here shortly as well. We'll continue these on until we get all eight series previews going up here on the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.